American Broadcasting Company presents The Land of the Lost. And its discoverer, the well-known storyteller, Isabel Manning Hewson. Ready for another trip to the land of the lost? That magical realm at the bottom of the sea where all lost things find their way? Then close your eyes and come along for Red Lantern is waiting to take you there with my brother Billy and me. You all know Red Lantern, the wisest fish in the ocean. He's the one who introduced us to King Findall, the invisible monarch who rules over the land of the lost. It's Red Lantern who's always called on when anything goes wrong down there. And that's what happened this morning. We hadn't been inside the kingdom five minutes before we heard a familiar voice. Red Lantern! Oh, Red Lantern! Oh, uh, backwater a minute there, Tadpoles. That sounds like Miss Spotty's voice. You mean King Findall's phonographer? That's who it is, all right. Here she comes. Oh, 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 oh my, oh my. Oh, I'm so glad I caught you, Red Lantern. Oh? I was hoping you'd come in this way. Dear me, what's bubbling now, Miss Spotty? I thought everything was ship-shape at the Royal Palace. Oh, it is, it is. But His Majesty has just had a report that there's some kind of a disturbance out at Fantasy Hall. Oh? Fantasy Hall? Oh, what's that, Red Lantern? Why, the home of lost fans, Isabel. Oh, one of the Palm Leaf brothers called uh, King Findall and asked if he wouldn't send someone to investigate. He seemed terribly agitated. Oh, probably nothing important. Those fan folk get the wind up over the slightest thing. But don't worry, Miss Spotty. We'll spin right over. Oh, splendid, Red Lantern, splendid. You can get there in no time on the sea breeze current. Uh, see, it's due to pass this corner now any minute. <laughs> and there uh, she blows right now. Come on, Pollywogs. All aboard. Hurry, Isabel. Not a girl. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Cheerio, Miss Buddy. Tell His Majesty we're on our way to Fantasy Hall. Here we are, Tadpoles. End of the line. Everybody off. Say, this is funny. Huh? I noticed it was getting darker as we rode along. But all of a sudden, everything's turned deep blue, like a summer night. <laughs> it is night in this particular bailiwick. Huh? You're on fan time now, small fry. Fan time? Yes, you see, the fan folk are a rather frivolous lot. They love parties and candlelight, so they've simply proceeded to turn night into day... And vice versa. Uh, look over there to the left. Jiminy Christmas. Regular mansion. All lighted up like a fancy dress ball. That's Fantasy Hall, Billy. Oh, it's beautiful. As beautiful as a picture in a fairy book. Hey, the fans have seen us. They're rushing to the windows and waving. And crowding out of the door by the dozen. Hail, Red Lantern! I'm Cheryl, if you want. Trumpeter, a fanfare. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
I've brought along some Earth friends, Isabel and Billy. Oh, delighted! Allow us to waft you inside, Red Lantern. This way. Did you ever see so many fans, Billy? Pearl and tortoise shell and embroidered silk and... Stunner's all right. This mansion of theirs is pretty ritzy, too. Ah, there, Red Lantern. Oh, Mr. Pomley, if I came as fast as I could. And are we glad to see you? This place has been an absolute flutter for the past week. Indeed. What's wrong? Well, sir, I I don't want you to think I'm just shooting the breeze. I'm a plain fellow, and I believe in plain speaking. Red Lantern... This hall is haunted. Huh? Haunted? We've got a ghost, Red Lantern. A spectre. An apparition. Christopher Columbus, you mean there's a phantom in the house? No doubt about it, Red. He's appeared before at least half a dozen of us. And my friends, who saw him first? I did. The Dowager Duchess of Ostrich Feather. It was utterly terrifying. I was, uh... Preening my plumes in that long mirror at the foot of the stairs when I suddenly felt a cold breeze yes, yes. and and a horrible hollow voice said not molding are you Duchess? Oh, dear me. I turned round to see who had addressed me so impertinently and and there it was. Golly. What did it look like? Tall, shrouded in white. That was all I saw. Oh, mercy, what did you do? My dear, I simply collapsed. I folded up. And when I came to it, uh, he, uh, she, uh, was gone. You're sure it wasn't one of the other fans playing a practical joke, Duchess? And me? They wouldn't dare. My nephew, Viscount Sandalwood, would break every stick in there. Uh, quite so, quite so. Besides, my aunt, the Duchess, is not the only one who has seen this phantom. By no means, my dear Viscount. Four of us saw him pass the door as we were playing Fantan the other night. And he threatened our pretty Chantilly here. Chantilly? That adorable little lady fan made of lace? Oh, please! It makes me shudder even to think about it. I'm so afraid. Oh, don't be a little idiot, Chantilly. If you'd only decide to marry my nephew and give him the right to protect you, no harm could possibly... Please, dear Duchess, I've told Viscount Sandalwood I would give him his answer tonight. Uh, you, uh, You say this phantom threatened you, Chantilly? What sort of threat? I'd rather not talk about it. But Red Lantern's got to know Chantilly. He came all this way to help us. Oh, very well. It happened this way, Red Lantern. I'd been tripping the light fantastic with Lord Ivory in the drawing room. Lord Ivory? Uh, You haven't met him, Billy. He's a big chap, very finely carved. (laughs) Another of Chantilly's suitors. She's been playing up to him just to fantasize poor Sandalwood. If you please, Duchess. Go on, Chantilly. Well, I... I said goodnight to Lord Ivory and and was on my way upstairs. Yes? Then I saw something move at the top like... like a white shadow. It spoke to me in a horrible moan. What did it say? Beware, Chantilly. Oh? Have no more to do with Lord Ivory, or you will be haunted for the rest of your life. Oh, oh, my word. Oh, oh my gracious. No wonder you are positively Fenway, frightened. Fenway, please. Fenway. Do I hear the word haunted? Why, Lord Ivory. Chantilly. Are you tearing yourself apart again over that silly ghost business? I... It was my fault, Lord Ivory. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this fantastic mystery. Fantastic is the word, Red Lantern. It's all hot air. What? Yes, indeed, sir. And what right have you to flaunt your opinions in the face of overwhelming evidence? Evidence be blowed. What? Uh, pardon my profanity. But you're all terrified of nothing. Oh? I appeal to you, Red Lantern. Is there, 
Or is there not such a thing as a ghost? Well, I, I never believed in them myself. Well, but... Certainly not. Because they don't exist. Don't exist. My dear Duchess, bring yourself up to date. You're still living back in the 18th century. Oh, you dare to twit me about my age. Sandalwood, your arm. I'll not stay here to be insulted. All right. All right, right, Duchess. Now look what you've done, Ivory. Ruffled the old girl's feathers and... I'm sorry. But I won't have that museum piece with her fantiquated superstition. Troubling my delicate little Chantilly. Oh, Lord Ivory, you're so bold and breezy. When you're near, you you seem to blow all my fears away. I'm just a fragile bit of lace made to screen a pretty face. You need a mate who's strong and true. Won't you let me shelter you? Oh, really, Lord Ivory? I, I don't know what to say. Say yes, Chantilly. I'm fluttered here and fluttered there. Like a butterfly in air. I've been a flirt, but that is past. For I've found my love at last. Ah, Chantilly, do you mean it? Oh, Ivory, my own dear. Beware, Chantilly. Oh, that voice! It's the phantom! Help, help! Quiet, Isabel. I don't see anything. Quick, Lord Ivory, look out in the hall. Yes, Red Lantern. Palmleaf, you look through that arch. Uh, nobody in sight, Red Lantern. And the hall is empty now. I tell you, it was the phantom. B -b 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 Blast me if it wasn't. Oh, stop trembling, Palmleaf. B -b 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 but I'm sensitive, Red Lantern. Another shock like this will land me in the planetarium. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Someone is trying to frighten us, that's all. I noticed our ghost didn't show himself this time. A red Lantern, a Chantilly. Oh, that's Viscount Sandalwood. And he sounds scared. Oh, uh, 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 are you safe, Chantilly? Uh, did he harm you? Did who harm uh, uh, Well, uh, What are you chattering about? Uh, the Phantom. I, I saw him just now. You uh, saw him? Uh, where? At the end of the passage. I, I, I was just about to enter the rear drawing room after my aunt. Yes, yes. And the... the Thing brushed by me coming from this direction. Yet, yeah, Zooks, I, I was chilled to the very border. Oh, oh my gosh, where'd he go? Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I rushed here to make sure that Chantilly was safe. Most heroic. But you ran the wrong way, Sandalwood. Suppose you take us back in the direction he disappeared in. Uh, well, uh, well, well, as you wish, Red Lantern. Wait here, Pollywogs. Come on, Palmleaf. Yeah, very well. Oh, but not you, Lord Ivory. Please, please don't leave me. There is no danger now, my love. But if you insist... Oh, I do. Boy, Viscount Sandalwood was in a dither. His fan sticks were knocking together like castanets. I always said a good puff of wind would send the fellow sailing. Oh, you were right, dear Lord Ivory. Why... Well, he's just a ladies' fan. And to think I almost accepted him. But Mr. Palmleaf was pretty rattled, too, and he hadn't even seen the ghost. No one will see that ghost again. Mark my words. Whoever was doing the masquerading is on the run now. You really believe it was just a, a hoax? Of course, my sweet. The trickster only showed himself to lady fans and cowards. Hey, that's right. Oh, I never thought of that. But it's someone who doesn't like you, Lord Ivory. Or oh, why did he warn me to have nothing to do with you? <laughs> My precious bit of gossamer. Every fan jack in this mansion is jealous of your slightest motion. And will be as long as there is hope of winning you. But, but there's no hope of that now. Then let us put an end to this nonsense once and for all. You mean... Tell the world that you belong to me, as I belong to you. Ah, Chantilly, 
Say you will. Oh, you sweep me off my feet, Lord Ivory. But I... I love it. I'll do as you say. My beautiful... It's Red Lantern and Mr. Palmleaf. Did you find anything? Not a trace. We went clear to the top of the house in case this fanatic was hiding in the fan attic. But I... Just as I expected. Where's Sandalwood? Uh, Gone to his room. He was pretty shaken up and no mistake. Why? We, We have something to tell him. I promised to give him an answer tonight. Well, you'd better hurry, Chantilly. It's nearly midnight and tomorrow's another day. Let him learn it from the others. They'll work up a breeze about it quickly enough. Uh, Palmleaf, yes. get hold of the Herald. Huh? Have him summon all the fan folk into the Great Hall. Right away, sir. Well, well, I, uh, I think I can guess what this is. Congratulations, Lord Ivory. Thank you, Red Lantern. Chantilly, my dear. An ocean of good fortune to you. Friends, this way. Oh, my goodness, Chantilly, you're simply palpitating. How do you blame me, Isabel? Just look at Lord Ivory. Isn't he high, wide, and fancy? Oh, he is nice. And your friends are going to be so excited. What is it? What is it? What's going on? Have they caught the phantom? No, ma'am. Then it's bad news. Oh, you can't fool me. An old fan like myself knows when there's something in the air. You're right, Lady Spangle. There is something in the air. But it's good news. I have called you all together to unfold an announcement that makes me the proudest fan in Fantasy Hall. Chantilly has promised to be mine. Oh, oh they promised to I, eh? Dear friend, it is the happiest moment in our lives. We want you to share our joy. Oh, do you? Do you mean you've jilted my nephew? Oh, not jilted, Duchess. I was never plighted to Viscount Sandalwood. It is ivory I love. But to marry him, my child, surely you're not serious. And why not? Have you you forgotten the phantom, Chantilly? He warned you against Lord Ivory. Do you dare to disregard it? Yes, do you dare? Silence! So this is how you greet our betrothal. Your pardon, Lord Ivory, but... I am sick of this babble about ghosts and apparitions. Show me your phantom and I'll believe in him. But until then... Oh, what's that? The fan, Father Clark. Striking midnight. Twelve o'clock, the time when... When ghosts walk abroad. Don't say that, Duchess. Listen, did you hear? Oh, it, it was nothing, Chantilly. Uh, it's the phantom. He's coming. Eleven. Twelve! And there he is, at the top of the stairs. Take heed, Chantilly. I warn you for the last time. Oh. Oh. Marry Lord Ivory, and you will bring disaster and doom not only upon yourself, but upon all who dwell in Fantasy Hall. Take heed. Before it is too late. Oh. My, my golly. It was real after all. Yeah. Yeah. Real my headlight. After him, Billy. Lord Ivory, up the stairs. I'm with you, Red Lantern. We'll get him this time. <laughs> They'll never do it. You can't get your spoon. I told you so. I knew something dreadful would happen if that headstrong little Chantilly ignored the warning. Oh, don't scold the Duchess. She's frightened enough as it is. We're all frightened. Didn't you hear what that fearful creature said about doom and disaster? Better break it off, Chantilly. 
Give Ivory the air. Oh, no, no. You must, Chantilly. Our lives depend on you. Oh, how can you be so selfish as... For shame, Lady Spangle. Do you insinuate that Chantilly would put her own happiness before the safety of others? By Count Sandalwood. You here? Lean on me, Chantilly. I know you would never betray us. But I... Oh, what shall I do? Leave it to me, adorable one. Forget Ivory. I'll make you happy. Teach you to care for me. Hey, Isabel, Mr. Palmley. Oh, there come Billy and the others. Oh, you can stop being scared, everybody. Lord Ivory was right. What? That phantom was a phony, just like he said. Look what we found. What? Oh, oh, a length of gauze. As long as a shroud. White gauze. Enough for some scoundrel to disguise himself as the shadowy specter you saw just now by candlelight. It was caught on the door handle. He must have torn it off, getting away. But who could he have been, Lord Ivory? Every fan in this household is here in this hall. Wait. There is one who joined us after the phantom vanished. If you mean me, Chantilly, I I came straight from my room. Did you, Viscount Sandalwood? Did you indeed? Or... Did you dash through the upstairs corridor, down the back stairs, and reappear unnoticed in the excitement without your bridal veil? You're trying to frame me. It's not true. And if it was, you couldn't prove it. Uh, I'm afraid he's right about that, Lord Ivory. There's no evidence. But there is, Red Lantern. Huh? I can prove it. Huh? You, Isabel? Billy, you know that sachet that Mother keeps in her bureau, the one in her handkerchief box? Yeah, but Well, what... just sniff this piece of gauze. It has exactly the same scent. Hmm. Well, so what? How does that prove anything? Because, Billy, this gauze and that sachet are both scented with sandalwood perfume. Sandalwood. That clinches it, Isabel. It's all we needed. Why the sneaking underhand? All right. All right. I'm all you say and more. But I only did it because I loved her. Loved me? I thought you cared for me, Chantilly, before Ivory came along. Then I saw my hopes crumbling. Oh, my poor boy. I tried to tell myself, may the best fan win, but it was no use. I was desperate. Ivory was taking her away from me. I had to stop it some way. So you started haunting this hall, hoodwinked your own aunt into believing in a phantom, pretended to have seen it yourself. Yes, yes. You know the rest. Do what you will with me. We'll do plenty. We'll give him a fan and you'll never forget. No fans. Off, I say. Let him go. But, Lord, I... He's had punishment enough. Failure and humiliation. Let's try to forgive and forget. You're a fan after my own heart, Lord Ivory. Hooray for Ivory. Hooray for St. Kay! Lovely the way! Oh, Ivory. Chantilly, let me fold you to my bosom at last. Music! Music! This calls for a fandango, folks. Come on, Isabel. Oh, won't you join in a joyous fandango? It's more fun than a waltz or a tango. Gaily swirling, swiftly whirling, as we sway in the breeze to the merry melody. Look at Ivor swing his chandelier, and the Duchess is dancing with Billy. All is merry, light and airy. There's no phantom in Fantasy Hall. There's no phantom in Fantasy Hall. Lucky seven time, Polly Walks. Want to hear a letter first? I think it's kind of fun knowing what other people say about things you like. This letter comes from Edward Allen, a Polly Wog in Cleveland, Ohio. He says, I received my Land of the Lost book. I looked at the pictures of the fish folk all during the show. I liked especially 
the picture of Red Lantern, Isabel and Billy entering the land of the lost through the magic seaweed curtain. It was a lot of fun listening to the land of the lost before I received my book, but now it's even more fun, because when I hear one of the fish folks speaking, I can see what he looks like. And every one of you polywogs can see what your favorite characters look like, too, in the land of the lost book. This is the book Isabel Manning Hewson wrote especially for you, so you could know the secret of how she and her brother Billy first went to the kingdom at the bottom of the sea. You'll all want one of these books, and I'll tell you how to get your copy as soon as you've heard the names of the winners who sent in the most interesting letters about treasures they've lost and want returned. First, Bobby Pruger of the Bronx, New York, wins a pocket flashlight. Patricia Parcell of Wichita, Kansas, gets a gold anklet. To Christine Bryan of Lake Wales, Florida, a turtle. And to Herbert Cassack of Brooklyn, New York, a pair of turtles. Jacqueline Belter of Queens Village, New York, wins a real monkey puppet. Michael Shields of Clifton, New Jersey, captain of the Red Lantern baseball team, gets a fine baseball bat. Second, Marjorie Hubbard of Grover Hill, Ohio, wins a gold engraved locket on a bow-knot pin. To Dottie Neff of McGregor, Texas, goes a beautiful red and blue beaded bracelet. Fine chemistry sets go to Kenneth Bartley of Amarillo, Texas, and James Huffstetler of Bessemer City, North Carolina. The Kid Squid Club has been awarded MacArthur medals for its salvage work during the war effort. Dolores Lewis of New York City gets a baseball, and a tennis ball is on the way to Patricia College, also of New York. Third, Frank Underhill of Heightstown, New Jersey, and John Rayford of Riviera, Florida, win fine gun and holster sets. And Michael Bonicum of Woodside, New York, also gets a gun. Fourth, here come the winners of rings. Edith Carver of Detroit, Michigan. Rosemary Betts of Galesville, Wisconsin. Ursula Coles of Cleveland, Ohio, gets a beautiful ring. Ursula and her friends had a play with characters from the Land of the Lost book, and she writes, Whether you're 6 to 16, you'll love this book. Teresa Merlone, Girl Scout in Womden, Connecticut. Jane Sell of Oceanport, New Jersey. And Jean Sebelin of Germantown, Pennsylvania. Fifth, sturdy pocket knives are on their way to Bob Hebert of Alexandria, Virginia. Robert Dyke of Kansas City, Kansas. John Garrett of Trenton, New Jersey. And Bill Wyatt of Sutherland, Virginia. Sixth. Sterling silver identification bracelets go to Carl Techman of Millneck, New York, Bob Hanna of Trenton, New Jersey, Arlen Garvis of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Donald Rosas of Stamford, Connecticut. The winners of bracelets with magic red lantern charms are Mary Kedowitz of Detroit, Michigan, Barbara Haganan of Chicago, Illinois, and Barbara Miller of East St. Louis, Missouri. Seventh, Dorothy Shue of Long Island, New York, gets a beautiful red leather pencil case filled with pencils. Our last winner is Shirley Collingsworth of Middletown, Ohio, who wins a doll to replace the one she lost, which she says looks like Isabel in the Land of the Lost book. Shirley writes, I have already read my Land of the Lost book to my brother ten times or more because we both like it so much. I wouldn't trade the book for anything in the world. Well, congratulations, all you winners, and to the rest of you, remember our motto, never say lost. And remember, too, if you haven't sent in for your Land of the Lost book, do it right away. Of course, you can't buy these books in all the bookstores all over the country. But the only way you can get a Red Lantern badge is by ordering your book through this program. And that's because it's a present to you from Isabel Manning Houston. To get your book and your badge, send $2 in cash, check or money order, addressed to The Land of the Lost, Box 20, Station G, New York. That's Box 20, Station G, New York. And listen next week at the same time over most of these same stations... When Isabel Manning Houston will again take you to the land of the lost. This is the American Broadcasting Company.